So far, we've supposed a few things about ideal gases. We have stated they don't have any intermolecular attractions, that when they do collide with themselves or with the walls of their container, that they do so elastically. No energy or momentum is lost in those collisions. And they have no volume. So we can pack as many of them as we need to into a container. We're gonna add a couple more details to this picture. First, we're gonna add the idea that these gas molecules are in constant random motion. So when they undergo a collision, they bounce off in some arbitrary direction. And because they're moving around randomly, if we wait long enough, they would eventually explore all the different positions available inside of the container. We're also gonna say that all the gases that we have in a container have the same temperature. Now the temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. And kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. The result of this then, since kinetic energy is proportional to temperature, that must mean if everything's at the same temperature, it's also at the same kinetic energy. So the average kinetic energy of a heavy gas that we put in our container will have to match the kinetic energy of a light gas that we put in our container for them to be at the same temperature. Well, since kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared, I think it's clear that for the heavy gas, the mass is gonna be large, and for the lighter gas, the mass is gonna be small. So in order for us to have this equality here, that's gonna require the velocity of the heavy gas to go down to compensate for that larger mass. And for the lighter gas, the velocity is gonna to have to comparatively go up in order for us to have these two quantities be equal. Now the result of that is that in gas mixtures, heavier gas molecules are gonna move more slowly on average than lighter gas molecules. And I say on average, we actually have a distribution of velocities. That has to do with all these random collisions that we're undergoing. So for our heavy gas, we have some of the gas molecules moving pretty slowly, some of them actually moving relatively fast, but they kind of center around this average almost. For our light gas, this distribution is spread out a lot more. And so we have a higher fraction of gas molecules moving at relatively high velocities. Uh, so that's going to move the average out here. Now I mentioned an average, we definitely want to be able to treat the velocity as an average. It would be pretty terrible if during our calculations we had to do separate calculations for the gas molecules moving at this velocity and this velocity and this velocity and this velocity for the entire spectrum of velocities. Now, so what we really want, is we want a way to just come up with some central number that gives us a general idea of how fast molecules are moving. So this is gonna be how we do that. We have a, a special formula here. The average velocity, this RMS stands for root mean square, is gonna be the square root of three times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the molecular weight. Now there's an important reason that we are using this kind of average instead of just taking the arithmetic average of the velocities, and that's because the arithmetic average is always gonna be zero. If we have a box of gas, that box is not moving, that must mean the average velocity of all the gas molecules is zero. That's not what we wanna represent, we wanna represent the fact that as we heat up the gas, then individual gas molecules are moving much faster. And so that's what this root mean square average does for us. As we heat up our gas, then this number will become much larger, even if the gas overall is not moving in some particular direction. Now a note about R here, we're gonna use a slightly different R from what we've been using. We're gonna use R is equal to 8.314 grams times meters squared divided by kelvins moles second squared. Now this constant is technically the same value, we've just changed the units on it, so that they will cancel out with the units we have here. We're gonna, with our molecular weight, 
and our temperature so that we get a velocity in the end. So as an example, let's say that we want to calculate the average velocity of the nitrogen gas molecules in the air at 25 degrees Celsius. Air is mostly made up of nitrogen, so we are more or less computing the average velocity of air molecules at room temperature. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take our formula that we came up with and we'll plug everything in. We'll use our new version of R and we will convert our temperature into kelvins and divide by the molecular weight of nitrogen which since it's N2 will be 28 grams per mole. And if we check out all our units here, see that kelvins cancels out, grams cancels out, moles cancels out. We're left with meters squared divided by seconds squared. When we take the square root of that, we'll just get meters per second, which is a velocity, distance over time. So that's good. We had better get units of velocity in our velocity equation. Uh, we crunch all the numbers here, comes out to 515 meters per second, which is about some 1100 odd miles per hour. So all the, the gas molecules in a room at room temperature, they're, they're moving about 1100 miles per hour. Remember the, the lighter gases are actually going to be moving much faster, and nitrogen gas is kind of on the heavy side. So, so most of the gas molecules that aren't nitrogen are going to be moving a little bit faster. I guess CO2, you know, that's 44 grams per mole. That will be moving somewhat slower. Oxygen is about the, the same mass. Now if you compare this to the speed of sound, that's 340 meters per second at sea level. So this number kind of makes sense. It's about on the same order as the, the speed of sound. And sound is a compression wave of air molecules traveling through the air. So it makes sense that the speed that sound moves is going to be somewhat less than the speed at which the air molecules themselves are capable of moving. An important observation was made about the motion of these gas molecules. 1831, Sir Thomas Graham is doing an experiment and he has hydrogen gas in a flask and he uncorks the flask and what he notices is that the hydrogen escapes much more rapidly than the outside air can move in to replace it. Why is that? Well, we established that lighter gas molecules move much more quickly than heavier gas molecules. So hydrogen being exceptionally light is going to move very rapidly out of the container. And it will take a comparatively long time for the external air to move in. Well, how much faster is the hydrogen moving than the air molecules? We can work this out if we consider two gases. And we've established that the average velocity of a gas is equal to the square root of three times the gas constant times the temperature divided by its molecular weight. And certainly the rate at which the gas moves out of the container is going to be proportional to its velocity. If it moves faster, it will escape faster. If it moves slower, it will escape slower. Well, let's write down the same information again for a second gas. So this will be our, our rate two for a gas of molecular weight two. And now if we divide these two equations, we get Graham's law of diffusion. Rate two over rate one, we divide them, divide this by this. So the three and the R and the T will all cancel out and we'll just be left with the square root of M1 divided by the square root of M2. So let's say we have some unknown gas that we want to figure out what its molecular weight is. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna mix this in with a gas that we do know its molecular weight, O2. And when we do this, we uncork our bottle. We find that this new gas escapes four times faster than the oxygen does. So then what is the molecular weight of our unknown gas? Well, let's just be clear what we're saying here. We're saying that the rate of the O2 is going to be equal to four times the rate of our unknown. So if we 
write the, the ratio for our Graham's Law equation, one rate over another rate, and the rate of O2 divided by the rate of the unknown is going to equal 4. And then that's going to be equal, according to Graham's Law, to the square root of the molecular weight of the second gas divided by the first gas. So now all we have to do is solve for the mass of the unknown. So we'll go ahead and square both sides to get rid of that square root, and then multiply by the mass of the O2, and that will get the mass of the unknown by itself. It's going to be 16 times the molecular weight of O2, which is 32 grams per mole. And so we've figured out that the molecular weight of this gas is 512 grams per mole.